Hey everybody, this is James from tdb.org bringing you another in between a soda solo one. So today, as you might be able to tell from the color, I am drinking uh, some ripe pour. Um, so this tea is the 2014 Montong Hong, number three. Uh, it's the third one, I believe, or the third or the fourth tea in the series uh, that uh, Scott has produced it, uh, produced over at Yunnan Sourcing. So you can see the wrapper here. I have broken up the last little bits of this cake. Uh, so we got the little ticket and a bunch of stuff over here. And so usually how I do it, for those of you that have not seen a ripe video before, is I'll break up these cakes, which tend to be more casual brewing for me. Um, and I'll put, uh, put it into uh, one of these Daiso tins, just a really inexpensive tin. And I'll just uh, drink it uh, daily with my ripe, with my wife, and I will drink this tin all the way down, and then I will uh, refill it, uh, keep taking from the same cake, or I'll move on to a new one. So you can see I have gotten down to the last bit. Here is the uh, ticket from the cake. Um, there's the wrapper, which will soon be recycled. Um, so I have finished another ripe cake with my wife. So uh, in this case, I have 10 grams here. Uh, and these tend to be a little bit more casual brews. Uh, you'll notice that I had my Tetsu bin out for a couple of my raw pour episodes recently. Using the electric kettle here, just a little bit easy, uh, easier, a little bit faster um, uh, to film with. Um, yeah, so uh, the Montong Hong, I bought this way back in either very early 2015 or in 2014. Um, and uh, yeah, let's get to the tea. Um, so I only had a few brews this morning. Uh, let's take a smell. Mm, smells very woody. Uh, definitely gives off a lot of uh, characteristic ripe aromas to it. No nasty wet pile or anything like that. This tea at this point is four years old. I also don't ever recall it being too uh, stinky in a bad way. Um, I'm not someone that gets overly put off by that, but uh, having a clean tea is always a nice thing to, uh, a nice luxury to have around. So you can see it's brewing a really dark color. I'm using 10 grams uh, per leaf. Uh, these brews were not very long. A pot like this will take a little bit longer to pour. Uh, then something smaller, it'll also hold heat a bit more. So your ratios tend to be, need to be a little bit different. I'll use anywhere from eight to 10 grams typically uh, for something like this. There's no need to be too anal about it. A tea like this is unlikely to get too rough. And I don't mind these teas brewing up a color that's quite dark like this. So cheers. So we've got a little bit of a silk texture to it. It's pretty rich, uh, it's creamy, it's woody. Um, it's uh, on the smooth end, it's not the smoothest tea. I think probably brewing it this hard uh, makes, it, uh, makes it a little bit stronger and maybe a little bit less smooth. Creamy, very tasty. Um, so there's a couple of brews stacked right here. Uh, yeah, and just taste feeling that taste take over my mouth. I just was coming from drinking a couple raw pours, which are much stronger. So this tea tastes incredibly sweet. It's really, really easy to drink compared to uh, the strength of those punchier raw pour teas, even the, if they're semi-aged. Um, and for me, that's generally how ripe fits in. It's it's a casualty. It's it's really easy to drink. I think just about any time of the day. Uh, for me, it's a tea that my wife likes a lot, so it's a reason that I can get through quite a bit of ripe tea. Uh, probably ends up just in terms of uh, pure weight to be the most consumed tea uh, between my wife and myself. Um, but it's also not a tea that I will frequently have really concentrated sessions, so uh, it's cheap, it's inexpensive. Um, yeah, so here we go. Maybe a hint of some fruity notes, pretty similar overall to the previous brew, uh, woody, creamy, uh, pretty tasty. And for me, uh, 
Uh, one recommendation I would give for people is that, especially if you're interested in Yunnan sourcing his ripes, uh, buy them when he just releases them. Um, people, well, I've seen people complain about how the prices go up. And it's true, Scott does raise his prices, but it's extremely predictable how he raises them. Um, it's something like 15 to 20% yearly, almost on the dot. Uh, so if you want the best price, buy the tea when it's really fresh. For me, that's exactly what I did with this tea. I knew I was a, I enjoyed the uh, Mantang Hong series. I'd had the uh, two of the earlier productions. Uh, and so when I saw he had this tea out, and I checked my receipts and I bought it for $16 from the US site, which means it was probably selling for like around 14 on the Chinese site. So really, really attractive price there. Um, and since then, the tea has gone up a bit. It's $21 now on the uh, Chinese international site. Um, so it's still pretty reasonable right now, but if you absolutely want to get the best price, uh, $14 is less than 21, just go ahead and buy it uh, young. I think uh, for me, Scott's ripes are plenty consistent enough that I don't mind at all blind buying uh, some of his teas because I know they won't, I've never really had a straight out undrinkable dud from him in terms of ripes. Um, so yeah, uh, just buy the tea young if uh, if uh, if you just want to get the best price. I I think it's really predictable uh, how his teas goes up. So I par I kind of don't understand the complaints about that. Um, obviously, I understand people want to pay a lower price, but uh, yeah, look at look at some of his young teas if you like. Uh, for instance, the Hui Run production uh, from like 2011 or 2013. It's a tea he continuously makes, so I know he's releasing some, I think, this year, or he just released some. So buy the 2018 one. Um, it's probably at least quite comparable uh, to the original. Um, and then it, you can wait uh, for a few years uh, for it to clean up a little bit. So just showing you guys here how I brew. Um, so uh, you can be pretty lackadaisical about this. Uh, so I had this water boiled just before going on camera. I definitely want to be using boiling water for ripe tea. So you can see uh, brews a very, very dark color. Uh, I just generally make big mugs for uh, my wife in the morning and I'll have a bit out of a teacup so we'll share it together. Uh, Still a pretty strong aroma, so I could tell that this could go for a few more uh, longer steeps. Probably got to start extending the steep time right around now. Uh, yeah, I don't have a ton to say about this tea other than it's woody, it's creamy, it's tasty. It's a lot of what I enjoy in a bright pour. Very easy to drink. Uh, paying $16 for domestic shipping, uh, which you can... Uh, Buy enough, if you buy spend seventy dollars, I think you get that shipping for free too. So uh, a really attractive price. I'm not sure that it's easy. Uh, there's very many uh, options that beat that in terms of uh, just bang for your buck. So uh, definitely recommend checking out Scott's Ripes. I have a couple more that are heading to me in the mail pretty soon. So I'll uh, I'll be moving those into the rotation now that I have finished the Montang Hong Three. Uh, I've never really rebought a lot of these ripe cakes for me. I just drink it all and move on to the next one. So I don't know what that says about me, but uh, that's been my habit uh, thus far. So sort of a drink as you go. Uh, I haven't accumulated a ton of ripes or anything like that. Um, so yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Let me know how you enjoyed this video. Uh, please do give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Uh, $21, still not bad for this tea. Uh, check out, see, email Scott, see if he's going to release any more of these if you really want to get uh, maximum bang for your buck. Uh, so I just I realized I did not actually give a rating for the Mantang Hong uh, 3 uh, from 2014. Uh, so uh, it is a 5.9 in this scale, so something that enjoyable, could definitely drink it regularly. Uh, fits in with a lot of ripes that I do enjoy. Um, it's good, and uh, for the price, especially if you got it early on, I, I, I really don't think you can complain much, um, especially if you like that sort of style of ripe. Uh, so yeah, that concludes this episode. Thank you to Scott for uh, making the tea. Cheers, guys.